hi guys welcome and welcome back to my channel if you're a new subscriber welcome to my channel my name is ayatollah the creative director of so unique by adoni and the content creator of this youtube channel diy with so unique by adoni and this channel was basically created just for you to teach you all things crafts and basically a lot of sewing you know tutorials from the comfort of your home so yes if that's something that you like to see don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you don't miss out on the awesome content that i have for you if you're you know a returning subscriber welcome back i would like to say a huge thank you to you first of all because you are one of the reasons that i am where i am at the moment and if you watch this video from the beginning and obviously and i'm sure you've seen that there are ads on this video guys they are ads on this video because your girl is officially monetized. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for helping me and for joining me on this YouTube journey. You guys have been absolutely amazing. So I took a poll and I asked, you know, what video you guys would like to see. And a lot of people asked to see a video on, you know, how to start a fashion business in Nigeria. And I don't know if you guys know, I am a dressmaker um, based in Nigeria and I live in Oyo State, Ibadan precisely so what i do full-time i sew for a living however of recent i've kind of like been switching to like making a lot of robes bridal robes and i actually enjoy it guys it's really good so today's video i'm going to be teaching you or sharing with you 10 tips on how to start a fashion business and i think like these tips can be applied wherever you are however i want to say in nigeria because that's where i am and that's where i have experience so i'm going to title it 10 tips on how to start a fashion business i'm sure you enjoy the video so enjoy it so guys i'm going to be reading from my notepad so just in case you see me looking down from time to time please excuse me bear with me i didn't want to forget any important points so obviously i had it written down so this is my <laughs> chicken handwriting but yeah anyway guys so the first one i have here is know your craft and do your market research which is basically what it begs the question what you need to have a clear vision when you're doing anything you know whatever business that you decide to do you need to have a clear vision you need to know what you're doing you need to know um what the market is like what the industry is like you need to study the industry so for instance if you're like me and you decide to do fashion first of all i want to say that you don't need to know how to sew to be a dressmaker okay there are so many people like sgtc clothing they don't i the owner adito keolua she's absolutely amazing she doesn't know how to sew and she's got a great fashion brand so you don't need to know how to sew you know to be a dressmaker you want to do your market research and if you do your market research properly you're able to do things properly you study things you know people wouldn't sweep people won't swindle you however you know there might be a few cases of people trying but the thing is the chances are low when you know your market you know what you're doing you know your crafts it's also important that i mentioned that crafts can be learned they can be acquired crafts can be learned and crafts can be acquired okay so if it's something that you're like makeup you're interested in you can definitely go ahead and look for someone who does that and then start your own makeup however we're focusing on fashion so if you're interested in sewing there are a lot of youtube videos like my channel and so many other awesome channels on youtube that you can check out and i'll teach you how to sew okay you could also enroll in classes you can there's so many ways you can learn guys you can physically go to classes i've got students here and my students come about three times a week and i teach them how to sew okay and i make sure to teach them fashion business so you want to make sure that you know your craft and you know it properly okay you need to know it very well so do your market research know what you're selling or what you're doing what am i doing for me i would classify myself as a dressmaker not really a fashion designer but a dressmaker because i make a lot of dresses so you need to know what you're doing you need to have a clear vision of what you're doing so that's it for point one also before i forget i need to mention that it's important that you do something that you enjoy why the way business is it will get frustrating at some point okay you wouldn't have clients immediately if you don't enjoy it you're going to lose interest quick if you're only in it for the money guys i'm going to tell you now it's not easy making money being a dressmaker a tailor a fashion designer it is not easy so just know that now before you you know decide to do this for the money so it has to be um a greater force um a greater passion pushing you towards that so yes moving on to point two point two i have here written identify your niche which begs the question who when i say identify your niche right it, it's it's basically who are you sewing for what niche so for instance you could decide that you want to specialize in robes right that is a niche um and that's what i do so i've got a robe page i'm gonna put somewhere here 
or you know right here on the wall and it's at robes by so unique and what we do is basically bridal robes it's kind of like a bridal shop so we've got all types of robes so you want to identify your niche there's some people that specialize in ashwebi which is basically making you know african attire for those of you who are not nigerians ashwebi is kind of like a uniform that people wear so it could be one fabric and a lot of people wear it and then they wear different styles so people specialize in ashwebi people specialize in um making of wedding dresses some people specialize in making making of corporate wares so you got different people my cousin phelan phelan empire i think that's what she's called um she does corporates so you need to know what you're doing you need to specify your niche you need to know who your um customers are and like i said identify your niche begs the question who next point I have here is identify your target audience and again this one begs the question who and is very similar to the last one and the last one remember it says identify your niche and why is identify your target audience important so being important rather within a niche you still have you know different groups of people so for instance we've narrowed it down and you've decided that what I want to do is I want to do wedding dresses okay now wedding dresses they come in different budgets and different ranges, guys. You guys are very aware of that. So for instance, I'm gonna be making reference to the Naira, which is what we spend here in Nigeria, if you're not Nigerian and you're watching this video. So you've got wedding dresses that are like 100K and below, I guess. I'm sure people will get wedding dresses of about 60K. I, I'm, I don't think I'm exaggerating. And you've got some that are like 250,000 and above. And why is this important? They're within the same niche, yes or no? Yes, they are they're all within the bridal industry however they are different price range so you need to say okay fine i have identified my niche however i do need to identify my tar target audience for some people my robes might come off as a bit expensive however to some people they are cheap so your target audience helps you say these are the people that i'm making um robes for i'm making robes so obviously that's helped me narrow down my niche i'm not just making anything i'm making robes however i am making luxury robes for people who are able to afford you know eye hand products right people who are looking looking to spend some money people who have you know the money to spend and can spare some cash on luxury that's who my robes are for i hope that's not confusing or those are who my robes are for i hope that's not confusing the next point I have here is locate a demand and this begs the question why? Why should I use your service? Why should I patronize your business? And for me, if you ask me, for instance, I run a business at Robes by So Unique, that's what it is on Instagram. And when anyone asks me, why should you patronize me? I'll tell you, first thing you get value for money, okay? So if you're paying, what, 20,000 for a robe or 25,000 for a robe, you're gonna get value for your money. Number two, you get unique designs. I don't just pick up designs off other people's pages, no. I create my designs, I take the time to sketch and create my designs. So you get unique designs. Number three, you get a robe that was made with love and attention to detail which is absolutely important so when you're making um, robes or you're making whatever it is that you're making whatever service you're offering you want to make sure that people are getting value for money people are coming to you for a certain reason so I'm gonna give a, a, a simple illustration if there are 10 dressmakers for instance or I want to say three let me not make it too wide excuse me so I want to say three dressmakers and one of these dressmakers for instance says oh if you come to me I'll make your dress in just one working day another person says if you come to me I'll make your dress in 10 days another person comes and says I'll make your dress in five days if you need your dress urgently most likely you're going to go to the person whose turnover time is just one day and that person has created a unique selling point for their product that is a why i will go to that person i'll go to that person because the turnover time for that person's production is really short and then you have another case where someone charges ten thousand naira for a skirt and that person charges five thousand naira for a skirt and that person charges twenty thousand naira for a skirt I'm not disputing that there's a difference within the production. However, certain people would choose to go for the person who charges 5,000 because it's cheaper. So to them, their reason would be it is affordable. So you need to create a unique selling point. You need to decide whether you want to be, you know, have creative designs that have never been done, or you want to have, you know, designs that are, cannot be replicated, or you want to have designs that, you know, whatever it is, you need to create a unique selling point. You need to locate a demand and then create a unique product to that demand. And the great thing about it is, while there might be 10,000 people or 1,000 people that do what you do, because you are doing something unique, you are locating a demand and solving a problem, people will come to you. So number five point I have here is start small and seek funds from your family when you're starting. So I don't know if I've ever told you guys my story, but and I'm sure I've never showed you guys. I, I'm, I'm actually ashamed to show you my room. I'll see if I can sneak a picture here or here. But I do 
everything I do from my bedroom, guys. You wouldn't believe it. Every single thing I do from my bedroom, I do it from my bedroom, <laughs> literally. My bedroom is a workshop at day time and you know, a bedroom night time. So in my bedroom, off the top of my head, I've got five sewing machines right here, believe it or not. I've got an ironing board right here. I've got a cutting table, guys. My bedroom is a junkyard and it's not even that big. So yes, the first thing you want to do is you want to start small. I'm obviously looking at getting a place by God's grace. And you guys, if you want to help me out, yes, shop my products. I put links, my Amazon links down below. I put my Instagram link so you can order your robes and I've also put um what's it called I have ads in my video don't skip the ads guys help me to get my coins thank you okay so back to what I was saying you want to start small you don't want to start too big obviously I need you guys to dream big however you do need to realize that you need to take small steps and then start small and then grow big it's always better that way when you think that you can stand on your own and then you can get a place definitely go for it however I want to emphasize it's important that that you start small and of course if you have family and friends you want to seek funds from your family if it's possible or friends or just save however don't pressurize yourself guys this baby right here I don't know if you can see clearly but this was my first machine and I got this machine a couple of years back I must have been in 200 level I must have been in about 200 level when I got this sewing machine and I bought this sewing machine believe it or not for 20,000 naira and I've had it ever since so I was in 200 level let's say about guys i can't remember how many years ago but i would think about it and put it somewhere here but then it's been a long time i've had this machine for well over eight years i think yeah well over eight years and it still serves the perfect purpose and I, I started with this machine I did all the things I wanted to sew with this machine and obviously eventually I grew and I was able to afford more machines also with support from my family my dad was absolutely amazing and supportive in my business so yes if you've got supportive family you definitely want to you know lean on them and ask them for money just a little bit of funds to start and then from that you can start you know buy a machine and just just start to do stuff that you want to do and then just grow from there but i want to say it again start small and start with funds that you get from family it absolutely helps you a lot guys Point number six and point number six I have here is cost your products well so first of all I want to say that cost your products well means that even if your products are expensive it's absolutely okay however you want to make sure that you're offering value for money don't sell crap products at expensive prices okay guys don't do that that's absolutely wrong you want to make sure that your products are priced well so I would say about if you're for instance you are producing an outfit and you want to think of um so the cost of materials the cost of your time um, the cost of the wear and tear on your sewing machines and equipment you want to think about all of that and then you want to factor that in of course you want to think about packaging cost as well after you've arrived at a, arrived at a figure guys i can't talk properly after you've arrived at the number and you've arrived at about say 3,000 or 3,500 naira for instance you want to make sure that you multiply that by three and then that will be your selling price so 3,000 by type by three will be 9,000 and then one five by three will be one five so that will be 10,000 naira 10,500 naira selling price okay so guys you want to make sure that you whatever the cost of production is obviously with your miscellaneous and your transportation logistics whatever when you're done Adding all of that together, you want to multiply the total by three and that should be your retail price. That's what I try to do. It's not really, um, it's not really practical in all cases. However, in most cases, I try to make sure that I do that. So that's very important. Also, another story that I wanted to share with you guys was when I was um, starting off on my sewing journey, because I was looking for clients and I was a bit, you know, stressed out of not about not getting clients, I decided to lower my prices, guys. I went, like, I lowered my standard for people. And the danger with doing that is, at the time, it seems like it works, right? Because you get a lot of customers coming in. But one thing is, the moment you're about to increase your price back to the original price, they all go so it's not worth it so if your price is going to be ten thousand naira when you're starting just stick to it people that will patronize you guys will come okay you don't need to beg people to patronize you people that will patronize you guys they'll come and i hate to say this right but usually friends and family could be one of those people that would not want to price you down and if it means that you're not sewing for them then don't okay it's absolutely okay 
don't allow people to price you down you're worth more you deserve more and you know my sister is here and she's literally saying that shots have been fired but yeah i'm just saying it. it is what it is i've got people that you know come to me for services and i charge them as much as thirty thousand for just maybe one dress or one top and they don't they don't price it down so don't let people price your work down it just means they don't value your work put a good price tag on your products i'm not saying that you should try and make profit off people i mean excess profit off people however it's the work that you've done you deserve the money so yes put the price on there and be proud of your price okay I'm proud of my price. If you guys ask me for all my prices, you guys, some people think I'm ex I'm extremely expensive, and some people think I'm cheap. So you know, you will get your customers. That's for sure, you guys. Next week. Guys, we're almost done. So point number seven, I have network and collaborate that's what i have for point number seven and why is this important so basically you want to put yourself out there that's something that i never did because i think i am a bit socially awkward guys i'm not even joking like my mom thinks i am antisocial anyway but you want to make sure that you put yourself out there you go for events guys excuse the background noise that's my dog what you want to do is you want to make sure you put yourself out there so if you have to go for events you want to represent your brand you want to you know wear your outfits if you're a dressmaker like me also you could work with influencers so they're influencers that are really nice and when you reach out to them hi how are you obviously you need to be polite while reaching out to people guys you need to be extremely polite don't be rude okay so you want to say hi hi i am I'm, my name is ayatollah and i'm a dressmaker and i've got this ankara pieces that i'll love you to try on and if you don't mind i really like that like, you post it on your social media account if that's not asking too much if that's okay would you like to send me your address you know residential address or whatever address it is for me to send out my product so you can have have a look or try it on so basically just something like that nothing too serious just send out a mail and some of them would respond and some of them won't respond however don't be disappointed another important th tip when it comes to collaboration is you want to collaborate with smaller um, vendors or upcoming vendors like you so obviously there are some vendors that I started out when I started out collaborating and organizing shoots I started out working with vendors who also wanted the same thing as me not necessarily small vendors guys however they wanted to grow as well and they were willing to work with vendors so obviously if your product as i am now literally even though i'm not a big person guys i'm not but if you reach out to me and you tell me oh you would like to collaborate whether you're a makeup artist or a hair a hair person whatever it is if your products are good and i see your work and your work is good and impressive i will work with you but if your work is tacky i probably wouldn't so please make sure your um, work is presentable as well before you reach out to people because obviously people want to only as associate rather with you know presentable stuff so you need to make sure that your work is good don't give tacky clothes to people and ask them to collaborate with you it doesn't i mean it's it's not going to come out nice guys you can't make a tacky outfit look good with pictures with editing so please make sure we have that on lockdown. Okay, next one. Point number eight, guys. So we're nearly done. We have just 10 points and we are at eight. Yippee! Point number eight is be consumer focused okay so one thing that you want to try and do is you want to create a relatable and exciting customer experience i'm not perfect i'm not and this is a disclaimer guys i'm not perfect right i have messed up on certain occasions however you want to make sure that every time customers come to you to purchase something or you know book your services they go back home with a very relatable and good customer experience and that's one thing that i pride myself in because i'm very particular about customer Customer service I try as much as possible to make sure that customers who come to me enjoy good customer service and if that's one if there's any remark or any comment that my brand has gotten as good feedback it would be the customer service is absolutely impeccable I try as much as possible to give impeccable customer service which will include you know talking to your customers politely um, cautiously you want to make sure that you're not yeah be patient with customers some customers will agree to you guys <laughs> if you want to hear my customer experience story hmm you guys I've suffered but you know what they say customer is king so as much as possible you want to make sure that you're polite to customers some customers will push you to the wall they will push you to the wall guys but you want to make sure that you don't allow them like you're like no devil not today not today so you want to make sure that you have like good customer experience all the time you're as polite to your customers as possible and you know that your customer or consumer focus you're always thinking from the perspective of a customer so if I was a customer how would this go would I like this how would I like to be spoken to so many times what I do 
for those of you who have messaged me and you're watching this now you know that what i do is when you send me a dm i'm like hello how are you how can i help you today or sometimes introduce myself my name is ayatollah and how can i help you today if you tell me what you want i'm like oh would you like to would you please send me your email address so that i can send you my catalog and then when you do that I'm, i i would most likely ask you how would you like to be addressed okay and then obviously i would address it in the way that you prefer to be addressed so yes guys being consumer focused is extremely extremely important please okay so guys point number nine be financially disciplined and principled guys I'm not even going to pretend like I have this on lockdown because if my father watches this video he'll probably say I'm still telling her to be financially disciplined and principled but you know it's guys guys it's absolutely important you cannot remain profitable if you lack financial discipline and if you don't save you need to make sure that you don't spend all that you earn. You need to make sure that you put some money aside. You also need to make sure that you invest, guys. So investment could come in different ways. So you could buy stuff that you need for your business, obviously. So I make money sometimes and I have to put the money back into the business. However, I am sure that it is an invest investment, guys. So you need to make sure that you are um, frugal with your spendings, especially work-wise, you need to make sure that you're trying to cut cost as much as possible and you need to make sure that you're financially responsible and financially disciplined. All right, guys, so the last and final point is have the right attitude. And this covers little bits and pieces of different different points however i have summarized it to have the right attitude the first thing i'm going to touch about talk about rather is be patient sewing or like being a business owner or an entrepreneur is not an easy thing it wouldn't happen overnight there's nothing like overnight success guys it takes hours and days and months and years you know you get the gist of working hard and working smart so you want to be patient and you want to keep working and in the meantime keep improving on yourself because a breakthrough will surely come you want to make sure that you're investing in yourself guys that's absolutely important i don't know how people don't you know are like alive and they're not investing in themselves like what are you doing you need to invest in yourself you need to keep learning you need to keep relearning if anybody knows me for those of you who know me personally you know one thing i'm always learning something like i'm always learning something like always learning something so yes i am challenging you yes you 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 to learn something to keep improving in yourself to keep investing in yourself spend that money on that book don't spend it on cold stone. Don't spend it on, you know, spend it on ordinary rooms. <laughs> but yeah, invest in yourself. Spend money on your books. Spend money on classes, on training. Don't, I mean, be reasonable, but don't spare expenses when it comes to improving and investing in yourself, guys. And like I said earlier, you want to be patient. And also, you want to just pray or, you know, trust God if you believe in God. Trust God for whatever it is that you want in your business. For me, I absolutely trust God when it comes to my business. And I always try to keep the right attitude, improving myself and put in the work when I have to put in the work. I am not lazy. Anybody that knows me knows that my work is absolutely important to me. So you can't be lazy, guys. You can't be lazy. All right, guys, we've come to the end of this video. Thank you so much for sticking to the end with me. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was worth your while. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to leave your comments, suggestions, and feedback in the comment section below. Also, guys, so I plan on doing like a couple of, you know, business series, like from time to time, obviously fashion business. And if you want to hear my customer experience stories, because I've got quite a few guys, let me know in the comments below and I'll share that, you know, maybe next month or something. But obviously we're back to tutorials from Sunday. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was worth your while. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Bye.